Eight months ago, the Sparmer County Courthouse, of course, went through a massive mold remediation project. We've covered it for you. It is the latest chapter in this really long battle over environmental concerns of the people who work inside that building. Our Diane Lee has an in-depth look at the history of the problems and the future of that building. What did you find out, Diane? Well, Tom, courthouse workers have been complaining, of course, about leaks and mold problems for decades now. All along, the county had cleanup crews fix the issues. But courthouse employees say the problems persisted. It wasn't until last year that the county did extensive testing and mold remediation. We found out it was only after a threat from judges that the county council finally took major action. Of all the battles this courthouse has witnessed in its 60 years, the longest may be the one waged by those who work here. I'm sure it's this mold and everything that's in here. That, I mean, I'm just constantly rubbing my eyes. Their fight is about what they've seen growing inside. I could not walk into the East Courtroom doors without getting ill. You walk in there, you see mold growing on books, on bookcases, on the bench, on chairs, flagpoles, and no matter how many times it was cleaned, it came right back within a week's time. And this is how far back? Back in 20 years ago. Chief Justice Donald Beatty says in the mid-90s, he asked to be moved to a different courtroom. The county paid for testing in 2002, which showed the East courtroom had a fungal spore count that was twice the recommended concentration. The county tasked maintenance workers to clean the area. And over the years, it also hired outside contractors to tackle concerns from leaky roofs and windows to flooded floors and ceiling tiles and walls blackened with mold. When Hope Blackley became clerk of court in 2010, she says the trickle of complaints coming into her office soon became a flood. It was consuming because that's what I was dealing with just about every day, all day. Blackley copied the county on major water and mold related maintenance requests. We all agreed that there was a problem, um, you know, but how we're going to fix it was the question. The county ordered more air quality tests starting in 2013. JMAC Environmental noted slightly elevated levels of mold in the family courtroom area and an ongoing condensation issue on courthouse windows. The county ordered a deep cleaning in 2014. But Blackley says the complaints kept coming, so she made a presentation that year to county council showing photos of leaks, ventilation issues, and mold concerns. When the county took no further action, Blackley used her own office funds to pay for an independent air quality test in 2015. The laboratory said it suspected the courthouse suffered from, quote, typical sick building syndrome. Hayes Microbial Consulting suggested more testing to check the duct work. Blackley sent those results to the county. Very frustrating. There were discussions, but no, no major um, corrections at that point. She did everything that she possibly could do. I think county council shirked their responsibility, concerned with the, the political fallout uh, in talking about spending that amount of money. Councilman Roger Nutt says Spartanburg County had been strapped by a recession and a loss of millions of dollars in state funds, but he maintains the county never ignored the problem. We tried to fix everything that we could as we saw them and as they came up. It wasn't until the beginning of 2016 that the county ordered more extensive testing, so we wondered what finally moved the county to take action. Through the Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA, we uncovered this December 2015 letter to the Chief Justice at the time. It was written by a judge who had filed his own FOIA request to see the clerk's 2014 air quality test. That's when Judge Roger Couch learned his suspicions about his courtroom were valid. They had the worst air in the courthouse. How did you feel about that? I didn't feel good about that. Judge Couch's letter explained how he had requested a meeting with county council, but, quote, have not been afforded the opportunity to meet with such members. I was mainly wanting someone to come test the place. Had the county been resistant to that prior? It had not happened. Discussions had taken place, I am told, um, about the problem, but I didn't see much being done about it. The judges basically said, we're going to put signs on the door that uh, that there's mold in here and it's it's um, horrible or what and, you know and the, the panic of that alone <laughs> was was going to be a problem obviously for our for our county employees. Some people might ask, why did it come to that? Um, just speaking personally, I don't think it should have gone that far.
Nutt says it was then the council fully realized the fixes were just band-aids for a building that now needed surgery. In early 2016, the county ordered extensive testing, followed by two mold remediations under containment and more testing. The price tag, $600,000. JMAC told me and the county the remediation is a temporary fix, three years at best, buying time for the county to come up with a more permanent plan. To fix it is to replace it, in my opinion. Seven News confirmed both sides, including all of County Council, now agree the only permanent solution is to build a new courthouse. Preliminary projections. Nutt showed us the study already underway to make it a reality. The question now, where will the money come from? There's going to have to be a, a tax increase. Just how much remains to be seen, and the voters will have the final verdict on whether a new courthouse will be built. That's when those who work here every day hope taxpayers will understand the need for justice to be served. And there is no word yet on what a new courthouse would cost or a timeline on when that vote will come. But, Tom, I, I do know that the county has requested that first phase be completed as quickly as possible. I can see why they'd want that done. But, mm -hmm. Diane, you, you found problems with leaks, with mold. That's already a lot of issues with that courthouse. Did you find anything else? Well, that's a very good question. Actually, the, the clerk of court in 2014, when she gave that presentation, mm -hmm. she actually included some safety concerns as well because you've got a situation where because of the structure of the courthouse, yeah. you have inmates who are walking in the same halls yeah. as visitors yes. and justices even and judges. So obviously that's a safety concern that the council at this point agrees would be fixed again by a new courthouse. Well, standards have changed a lot in 60 years and our understanding too about mold and the health issues it can cause as well as the safety issues. They sure have. All right, Diane Lee, thanks very much. Amy?